If you've ever seen someone solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded, like me for example, and wondered how it was done, well, you're in luck. This video is going to explain as simply and clearly as possible how it's done. It's not a tutorial or anything, but you'll hopefully understand the general method by the end of this. Now the first thing you need to know is the cube is split into three piece types. Corners, edges, and centers. The centers can't move in relation to each other, so they're always in the same place, and they decide what color that face is. So this, this is always the blue side, this is the red side, this is the yellow side. And you can do something like slice it like that, and look the centers have moved, but they haven't actually moved in relation to all the other centers. And edges can only move into edge spots, and corners can only move into corner spots. So you'll never be able to get this edge to go right here, because it'll just go here, you know? And what you have to do is solve the corners and solve the edges as kind of two separate steps. Okay, so the basic idea of solving a cube blindfolded is you memorize where each piece is and where each piece needs to go. So to help memorize more easily, what we do is assign a letter to each piece of the cube. And this allows us to convert a scrambled cube into essentially 20 letters, or around there. And that's what we have to memorize. So for blind solving, we always have a fixed orientation, which is the way you hold the cube. So I always do it with blue top and red on front. And you can tell that on a scrambled cube by the centers, so blue, red. So from here, you find your starting piece, which we call the buffer, and that's always the same uh, piece. Not the same colors, but the same position. So for corners, it's the, uh, the top back left one. So on here, it's this piece. And it is orange, blue, yellow. Where does this orange, blue, yellow piece belong? Well, it belongs back here, between the orange, blue, and yellow centers. Then we look at that corner, this white, red, blue piece, where does that go? Between the white, red, and blue centers up here. So after all that, what I've got is the letters O, R, G, T, M, N. So for edges, it's basically the same thing. You have a starting point, which for me is always the top front piece. So it's this one here. And it's red, yellow. So that goes here between the red and yellow centers, and so on. You just keep tracing the pieces out, and then for this scramble, I'm left with all of these letters that I have to memorize. Now, how on earth do I memorize a whole bunch of random letters that don't mean anything? Especially when I'm doing something like 200 cubes. Well, you can use something called the method of loci. I think that's how you pronounce it. But without going into it too much, it's basically turning two letters into a word and turning those words into images that you place along a familiar root in your head. So in this case, what I would imagine is orange goat moon for the corners, and then for edges, fox boil ds lighthouse night. So the blindfold is on and we're starting with corners, and the first two letters are OR. So I know from just knowing my letter scheme that O is this sticker back here, and, o and R is this one. And I'm not going to teach you how to solve every combination of two pieces because that would take too long, and this is not a tutorial, but the idea is really, you know a preset a sequence of moves to solve any given case, and for this one, I do what that is, it probably looks like magic to you, but it's not, <laughs> there's a method behind it. I'll link an actual tutorial in the description, so if you want to learn, you can. But what that's done is it solved this corner and this corner. The next letter was GT, I do the the moves that I need to do, and then eventually you've solved every single corner piece. And really that's all there is to it, you just rinse and repeat with different letters, different pieces, and different sequences of moves. So the first word for edges was fox, meaning the first two letters are fx, so it's these two pieces. And I don't have to see because I just know that it's that f is here and x is here. So do the algorithm that solves those two pieces, and then... And that is a solved cube. 
Now there's more to it than that, and that was kind of an easy scramble just for demonstration purposes, but essentially I just wanted to give you an idea of what is going on when someone solves a cube blindfolded. If that was helpful, let me know. And if you're still confused and it made absolutely no sense, also let me know. That's about it really, so bye.